Hi everyone, my name is Cheryl. Welcome to my happy handcraft studio. Thank you to all my returning subscribers. It's always great to reconnect with you and read your comments down below. As well, I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers. Thank you for deciding to subscribe to my channel. Because I have uh, quite a few new subscribers, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about where I live. I live in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains near Calgary, Alberta. I do a lot of handcrafts. Right now I'm working on stitching, quilting, crocheting, knitting, bag making, and then sewing makes that I make for a local charity. So I'm busy. There just aren't enough hours in the day, but I love every minute of it. So that'll give you a little bit of an idea what you might see as well. I am an avid reader but no book reviews this episode. I've got a couple books on the go, so we'll, we'll see how, how those go. So first of all, a few questions. So I did have a question about where I found the conversion for Garden Sampler. This is a Hirschner's pattern. And it was charted for Valdani silks, or Valdani silks. And I used um, Starlight Stitchery. They have a conversion. Now, sometimes you might have to go to one or two others just to see what they might say for a conversion. But I'm happy with it, and I'm especially loving the pink. So I'll talk about this one a little bit more in just a few minutes. And then another question I had was about this sampler here. This was the um, Quaker sampler that was the 2020 Fox and Rabbit Mystery Cell. So that is now uh, a paid uh, for pattern um, at their shop, Fox and Rabbit. So, you know, Always go to Fox and Rabbit Facebook group, um, see what's happening there. Go to Fox and Rabbit uh, website and check out what the mystery cell is. You can still um, download last year's mystery cell for free. So I think they give you maybe one extra year before they uh, make them a paid pattern. Definitely worth um, your trouble of going to the website. So those were uh, a couple of questions from last time. No fully finished objects. I have one in the works right now and no finished objects. I have quite a few getting close but nothing was finished in this last couple of days. So I talked last time that I was using the tiny decision wheel to choose my projects for me. I had had all my February goals complete, so it was time to just work on projects. And my emphasis is always on my 2022 projects. Those are the projects that have been in my uh, queue the longest. So those are the ones I'm working on. So I always worked on two of those, and then one of my uh, New Year's Eve starts or New Year's starts for 2023. And so I'll show you um, my progress on those. So I gave you a glimpse of Garden Sampler. So like I said, Garden Sampler is a Hirschner's pattern. It is free. I'm doing this on a 28 count tea dyed Irish linen. Like I said, I did uh, change it from Valdani to DMC. And I'm enjoying working on this with it 
giving me kind of that spring feeling. Another one that I've done quite a bit on is Tis the Season. And if you've been following me, you've been seeing this regularly because I want to get it done. So Tis the Season is a Sub Rosa design. And it's, it was in Punch, Needle, and Primitive Stitching Magazine, Christmas, Winter, 2021. And this is on a 28 count even weave in Mushroom. I used the call for DMC. Now, what's left for this is more holly and berries along this side. So I have about three of those to do and then it'll be complete. So that one, the end is coming. I have my stitching that I take to Stitching at the Library. City Stitcher Judy organizes that for us and I just heard today that the next one is going to be March 18th at the Signal Hill Library, 9.30 to 12.30. So if you're able to join us, we would love to see you. We'd love to know more Calgary stitchers, more stitchers who live in our area. It's great to have a community. So what I work on there is called Pumpkin Alphabet. And this again was a free pattern from With Thy Needle and Thread. This is on a 14 count um, Ada which is great for stitching without magnification. So that one's really coming along. Again, another project close, close to the end. And then I have Remember November. And this is a Marnik design. And this is on a 28 count white Monaco. And this is one of those stitches that's one of the fussy stitches, you know, where there's lots of blended, blended colors, you know, a thread from each color, very confetti heavy, but I'm, I'm really loving how it's coming together. So looking forward to working on that again. I always work on the 11th of each month. The next piece that I work on quite a bit in a month is uh, Queen Elizabeth II in her coronation dress. This is on a 28 count vintage blue cashel. I'm using the call for DMC. And this time I was working over on the, there's a, a royal robe that lays over on that side. So I work on this the 6th and the 21st of the month. So those were my 2022 20, stitches that I worked on while I was still using the tiny decision wheel. And my newer starts, I worked a bit on Chocolate Bunny. Chocolate Bunny is um, by Teresa Kogut, and this was in Punch Needle and Primitive Stitching Magazine 2020 Spring. Lots of white, so it'll be a while before I get the rabbit finished. And then my New Year New Start was Kingdom of Books, and I've worked on this a fair amount but not that you'd ever be able to tell so this is a center start and this is on a 32 count Belfast linen in mocha and that's to kind of represent the wood backing on the bookshelf I'm just happy to work on this as much as I can. All right, and now the big surprise. So 
people who have been following me, they've seen this piece for a year. And I told everyone that I was done. I wasn't going to do any more. And then I changed my mind. So the piece I'm talking about is Changing Seasons. So Changing Seasons is Fox and Rabbit 2022 Mystery Sal. And I had this center block done and then they released the December pattern which was the entire border and it was like no I'm not doing that I just I'm done with this I'm happy with the center I'll do something else and so my plan was that I was going to stitch the lyrics to Turn, Turn by the Birds all around the outside. So just, you know, the, the first part. To every season, turn, turn. That, that song. But I would have had to chart it. <laughs> and so I, was, I mentioned that I had my tiny decision wheel. And every time changing seasons would come up on the tiny decision wheel, I'd go... Oh, I, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to chart it. So, at the same time, I'm also following Fox and Rabbit Facebook group, and I'm seeing people finish this project, and also explaining how they were going to finish it. And I realized that, yes, I did want to complete it. So one of the things that I didn't want to do was have all of these colors in the border. Like to me, it was just kind of visual overload. And so I decided that I would do just this monochrome, um, one stitch, one color, all the way around the outside, just to give it some, some weight, I guess you would say. And this is a lovely stitch. Like when you're just stitching in one color and there's nice big blocks, it's great. So in this last week, I've put almost 1,600 stitches into this corner. And I'm excited to work on it. So I'm right now I'm thinking I'm, I would like to work on this one every day and then add other stitches to it. So it might be like my 25 minute a day, seven days a week, one thread, two threads. I'll continue to have this one grow. But now I'm excited again to, to have this one back. So you'll be seeing it regularly. All right, so my stitching plans. Well, there's Whipgo. And for Whipgo, Jessie Marie does stuff. She calls um, two numbers every month. And I have my chart here. And for my Whipgo, I do 500 stitches in the month. So an easily obtainable goal. And she, this month was 2 and 22 that she called. Well, number 2 was oldest whip. And so I've decided Changing Seasons is my oldest whip. Hoity Toity and Changing Seasons are both tied because uh, they both started January 1st, 2022. But I'm going to do Changing Seasons. And then number 22 is whip that reminds me of travel. And so for that, I'm going to do the Queen Elizabeth II in her coronation dress. Because that would be a, London would be a great place to travel to. So, whip go plans. And then, after whip go, or actually starting even sooner, I follow the Steel City Stitchers. And they have March Madness. So March Madness, 
for people who aren't sports fans is basketball. You know, it's the end of season basketball finals and they have brackets. And uh, so, you know, it's teams play off against each other and move through the bracket. We do, you know, they, they do it in baseball and hockey and all that. But for March Madness, we're doing it for stitching. And I did this last year and we're, this is on Instagram. And you, or it can be on Instagram. You could just do it without being on Instagram. You could find a different way to, to uh, manage this. But you make up a bracket. And the idea is that at the end, one of your pieces will be fully finished based on the choice that somebody else made for your projects. So you choose the projects that you want to work on and that you also think you could fully finish by the end of March. And if you follow Steel City Stitchers, you'll know about this. If not, there are uh, some floss tubes about how to organize your bracket for um, March Stitchy Madness and also how to put your voting onto Instagram. So I'll just show you here what mine looks like. So my first bracket I've called Spring Fling. And the two pieces I've put up against each other are Chocolate Bunny and Garden Sampler. So March 1st, I'll work on Chocolate Bunny. March 2nd, I'll work on Garden Sampler. And then I'll put it up to a vote. Which one should I continue on? Which one do you like the best? And that will go over here. My next bracket is Seasonal Spar. And for that, I have Tis the Season and Pumpkin Alphabet. Again, I'll work on both of them, and then I'll have my Instagram followers vote on which one will go forth. Uh, the next one is Santa Showdown, and these are two Prairie Schoolers I have. Santa 2006 and Santa 2009. I'll work on them both. My viewers will decide which one goes forward. And then the last one is the Oology Battle. I have two two oology pieces, number two and number three. I'll work on them both and then we'll see which one goes forward. And then the voting continues until I have one that I need to fully finish by the end of March. So it's just kind of a fun, fun way to get some stitches on a lot of uh, projects and also involve your Instagram viewers. So my Instagram um, address is happy dot handcraft studio and you can find me there i'd love to have you vote it would be great to um, see what, you, what which pieces you like the best all right so lots of stitching plans i will show you my um temperature blanket so I've been working on a crochet temperature blanket and it is based on this free pattern from Michaels. And I have my temperature chart. And I have my basket of colors and I have my progress. So this is up to date for today. So this color here is when it's 25 below zero in Celsius, so minus 25. One more degree, if it would have been minus 26, I could have used my coldest color, which is white. But, so we, as you can see, we've really only had two cold stretches and they have only lasted like two or three days. Now, 
this is getting to a great size in that when I'm working on it and I lay it out, it now covers me. So the blanket is already doing its, its duty. So just, I, I'll give you a little bit of a close up of the stitch pattern. Now I'm not a great crocheter, but you know, I, I, I can fall. There is a video. There's a full tutorial video that I've linked in my description box to explain how to do this. So, you're chaining in and then you do a four chain. And now, and then you chain into the body of the piece and then you leave a chain. So then when you come back, you actually chain over that. And that's what gives kind of the ripple effect to the pattern. And you'll notice I always put my ends in. I sew in my ends every single day that I need to have ends put in. I do not like sewing ends in when the project is done. I like to have one end to, to put in. So I, I'm loving that. I have done a lot of knitting that I'm not going to show you today, but hopefully next time you're going to see a sweater, three hats, and a cowl. Now this sweater I had started more than a year ago, probably two years ago, probably 2020, I can't even remember, but I got to a part where uh, I was stopped, but I picked it up and I finished it like, you know, sometimes you, you put these projects and you're really not sure why. So I have that sweater to block. And then because I was just so thrilled to be knitting, I've decided I want to make another sweater with color work, with a color work yoke. But I wanted to practice color work, so I made a hat. And it was too small, way too small. I followed the pattern, but it was way too small. My mistake was... On Ravelry, if you're going to start a project, you should always go to the project comments. So this is where people who have made the project comment on it. And almost everyone commented that this hat was way too small. And they had two suggestions. Cast on 20 more stitches and repeat the color work one more time. I did that. Perfect. Okay, so... Note to self, always check out Ravelry project notes before you actually start the project. So I made it again. So I just, that's the beauty of knitting is if you don't like it, you can just unravel it. It's, it's great. And I knit it again, loved it. So I'm knitting it again because I have enough yarn left for another hat. And these hats will all go to our bags, babies and beyond charity event that the Ujama Grammas hold in October, October 2023. All right, uh, so you'll be seeing finished projects next time. Um, I'm working on a project bag. You'll see that next time. Oh, I have one project I have to show you. It's just over here. So if you were watching over before Christmas, you would have seen that I had a beautiful white and pink tree here. And I was practicing ornaments to make for our charity sale. And one of the things that I had made were these little snowmen, snow people. And these are made out of scraps of my quilt batting with some homespun scarves. So this is what I made. Now, when I was talking, I showed them to my bag making group and I don't know who suggested it, but they suggested that I make some that look like ladies snow people. And so 
I have put on. Oh, she even she even dances. See that? She twirls. So this is some vintage trim that I've put a ribbon of the homespun through, and I've just tied it onto the back and put a little ribbon. Just with the way the arms go, it almost looks like they are dancing. So, so these ones are for the sale, but I know I'm gonna have to make some of these for my own tree because I really love the little tutu. I think it's great. So, yes, I made I made a bag of them. So those all will go to the sale. All right. I think I think that's everything for today. I'm just going to uh, put a picture here of my snowflake quilt. So I showed this last time and the picture I showed of it was I was uh, sharing it at one of the quilt guilds that I belong to. And so I we go up and we talk about it and we show the quilt. But I belong to another quilt guild, so I needed a photo of it. And, you know, it's been so cold that, like, you're not going to go outside to take a picture of a quilt. But once, once it warmed up and the snow was plowed, I put my quilt on the big snow pile that is outside of my house. Uh, just, I think, perfect. It's a big pile of snowflakes with my snowflake quilt there. Uh, that pattern is from um, modernhandcraft.com, and it's also linked down below. So I love when we're snowed in. I love when it is so cold, we don't leave the house. Now, I'm really fortunate. I'm retired, so when it's cold, I don't have to go anywhere. When the roads are covered with snow, I don't have to go. I can just stay home. It, does anybody else have a certain atmospheric condition that really makes them feel happy to be at home? Uh, I, I love, I love my, my snowstorms and being snowed in. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Please like and subscribe, and I'd, I'd love to hear what you're working on. It's always great to know what the viewers are, are also working on. If any of you have some of the same projects, it's great to hear. I also love to hear when um, you've shared your my book reviews with other people and or you've enjoyed the books that I've reviewed. So, great. But I'll see you next time, hopefully. In a, in a week or so, uh, it, it's a really busy time. Uh, the charity quilt that's traveling Canada to be constructed is going to be in Calgary next week. And right now I'm making arrangements for a facility and for people and for supplies. So hopefully I'll be able to show you some photos of that event as well next time. All right, everyone. Stay well. Be happy. Bye for now.